Well, you may sit very comfortably at a fish restaurant or by a beach, enjoying the beautiful surroundings and all of the wonderful things that you can do in June. And we're in Gemini season, so it's a great time for communication, networking, connecting with other people, getting out, being sociable, learning from others, teaching others, having conversations, um, you know, doing so many different things. Um, we have something super intense happening because Pluto is moving retrograde back into Capricorn on June 11th. And so Pluto, you know, remember that back in 2008, um, Pluto entered Aquarius full time um, in November of that year. And then it stayed there until this year, until March 23rd of this year, when it moved into Aquarius. And that transit was really about our ideals and our beliefs and um, what, you know, doesn't serve us and, and sort of um, how we want to appear in our um, communities, um, you know, with our friends, what are our visions for the future. Um, and um, are we allowing ourselves to be our unique, authentic selves um, and not having to fit into a certain way of doing things um, and be true to who we are? Uh, it also is about, on the mundane level, decentralization and technology. And is it used for good or for evil? Um, you know, that's also a big conversation with AI. Um, and so many new technologies will be coming out over the next 20 years when Pluto is in Capricorn, especially in the middle part of this decade, actually. There's going to be several trines from Uranus and Gemini and Pluto and Aquarius. It's really going to be a boost to technologies, innovations, inventions. Um communications, um, it's going to be huge. And um, it also relates to power to the people, um, where we're putting power back to, um, you know, each other. Um, and we're claiming our own power and we're doing things that can, that are true to us, but also how can we serve the group? How can we serve humanity? So, um, you know, this year on May 1st, Pluto moved back, Pluto stationed retrograde. So Pluto's, Pluto goes retrograde um, about, you know, five uh, months out of the year. It spends about some of the year retrograde where it's reviewing, reevaluating, revisiting territory that it already covered. Um, before. That's what planets do when they're retrograding. And it's a time to go inside of ourselves, review, um, meditate on, and reflect on and really replenish our energies for when the planet goes direct, we can, you know, we're more active, um, more outgoing, more, you know, moving forward with our lives, etc. Putting things into motion, making things happen more, um, yeah. So, um, you know, Pluto, you know, is, you know, it's retrograding and it's reflecting on the Pluto issues and themes I'm going to be discussing. So Pluto stationed retrograde on May 1st um, in Aquarius, zero degrees of the sign. On June 11th, it's going to move back into Capricorn. Um, then... On um, October 10th, around that time of the month, it is going to station direct in Capricorn. It's going to continue slowly moving forward until 
January 20th, 21st of 2024. Um, right around that time in January next year, Pluto is going to fully re-enter um, Aquarius and it's going to make a conjunction to the Sun, um, which I believe is going to be the 20th, 21st. Um, it's going to be powerful. I um, mean, it really is. Um, and, um, yeah, so, you know, Pluto is going to enter Aquarius. It's going to stay in Aquarius for most of next year and, and, um, for, um, some time, um, next year. Um, I think, you know, I have the dates for it. Um, let me just see if I can find those dates here. I have them written down. For Pluto moving back into Capricorn next year. Um, okay, so um, Pluto goes back into Capricorn on September 1st, 2024, and it's going to officially enter Aquarius on November 19th next year. Um, and so, yeah, and Pluto officially entered Capricorn in 2008 on November 26th. So, um, I have another video that I made on Pluto in Aquarius that you can go check out on my YouTube channel. So, um, those are the dates for that. Um, so, yeah, it's sort of, you know, these movements, these back and forth movements between Aquarius and Capricorn. Is sort of a tearing down um, of the old, or sort of tying up loose sense of the old world, the old paradigm, the old era, and then moving into the new. Because Aquarius is about the new, it is about um, what is um, novel, what is unconventional. Um, it deals with the future, it deals with um, talking about new earth, um, and that whole conversation. Um, and, um, you know, just the new world in general. Um, and so, you know, Pluto is moving through these last degrees of Capricorn, early degrees of Aquarius, back and forth. Um, and, you know, it's like we're not done yet. We're not ready to move into um, Aquarius yet. You know, we still have some unfinished business, and so that's what Pluto's doing. Um, retrograding, going back into Capricorn, moving back into Aquarius. It's going to continue doing this for 2023 and 2024, when in November 2024, it's going to fully enter Aquarius, where it's going to stay for the next 20 years, starting in 2024. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, Pluto in astrology is the planet of death. It deals with death, what has to die away for you to become reborn again, because it also deals with rebirth. The idea of emerging from the shadows of your being and becoming someone brand new again, but that only happens through serious transformation and serious work on yourself. It also deals with evolution. And in order to evolve, you have to be aware and you have to face your truth. You have to face what is really going on inside of you. Pluto digs up any um, secrets or any lack of accountability um, and truth on the collective and also individual level. Pluto demands that you look at it, that you face it, you acknowledge it, and then you heal and you change, and you don't stay the same person that you were. It's becoming someone better than you are now. It's about shedding skin and um, emerging as someone who has gone down that path of, um, you know, of evolution. So, um, you know, that's what Pluto is about. Um, it also deals with power. Um, Pluto is discovered around the time when 
World War II was starting up, and you have Hitler, you have Stalin, all these people coming to power, and also how power is used for good or for evil. Um, and people who are very plutonic hold a lot of power, um, um, you know, in them. Um, and it deals with you being very powerful and being very, um, you know, resilient and strong to be vulnerable about your feelings and to do that work to transform. Um, so there is definitely positive sides to Pluto, but the downsides of Pluto are very obvious and very clear. And, um, yeah. So, you know, dealing with Pluto and Capricorn um, on the mundane or collective level, this deals with power, um, you know, of governmental structures, institutional structures, um, top down, where some people at the top are very rich and hold a lot of power, and other people at the bottom are lower um, in terms of power. Think about the American Revolution. Think about the French Revolution and those profound periods in history where, you know, you're really digging deep into what was going on at the time. You can find that the British held more power over the Americans and um, who they wanted to be as a sovereign nation. They felt they had the right to be their own nation, be independent, make their own rules, that, you know, freedom, liberty, justice for all, um, independence. These are all very Aquarius themes here. And that, you know, Pluto also, um, you know, and Aquarius also stimulates um, the need for a revolution also. So, um, yeah, and so that's, that was a big revolution, um, and Pluto is at, you know, the end of Capricorn, uh, the beginning of Aquarius, of course, the U.S. Pluto return, where we're digging up any secrets, and we're, um, um, you know, we're really changing, and really digging up anything that doesn't serve America as anymore, and what is going on with America as a nation. Um, and there's many other astrologers that will talk about the U.S. Pluto return, um, you know, in detail and what that is all about. And it's still ongoing, um, you know, it really is. So that U.S. Pluto return um, is at the very sort of end of Capricorn, um, beginning of Aquarius. It's that just general broad stroke of that Pluto return. So... Um, the French Revolution was another one where, you know, again, power to the people kept coming up with people being rich and that whole, you know, aristocracy system um, where people at the wealth had a lot of power, wealth, and what about all the common people? That's a huge part of Aquarius energy, the, the power to the common, you know, to the everyday um, person. And, um, so, um, yeah, so it deals with, you know, the patriarchy, very traditional systems of power. Um, that's what Capricorn deals with because it also deals with tradition, the way that things have always been, such as kings or queens in England and that whole system where, you know, the, um, it is tradition that, um, the next, the oldest son then inherits the throne and becomes king in this, this whole system. So it deals with traditional systems of power, but with Pluto, it's about the, those systems of power that don't work for us anymore. Now, another piece of this is the rich getting richer, you know, the rich accumulating more wealth and money. And there was the global financial crisis with the banks back in 2008, um, and that, um, you know, that event, um, and, and, and those things occurring at that time, um, you know, accumulating large amounts of wealth and money and, and people keeping it to themselves as opposed to sharing it, as opposed to putting others first, as opposed to leaders serving 
um, humanity and serving the masses um, and doing something compassion and pro compassion and prosperity is what I'm doing serving you know that you know is it the highest good for all um, is what I'm doing is what those leaders are doing um, when you talk about politics or people in power is it for the highest good of all um, and maybe when Pluto entered Aquarius, people have become more powerful, um, more in control. Um, but the positive side of Pluto in Capricorn is inner authority, you know, really tapping into your own inner authority that you're not going to allow these external figures and people to find your life, your choices, what you want to do, your destiny, your calling. Um, what path you want to go on, um, the choices what you want to make, um, the dreams that you want to see come to being reality. Um, it's where you can step into your own sovereignty. Um, and those top-down structures are, you know, sort of collapsing and it's sort of a, you know, demolition site, if you will. Pluto and Capricorn is sort of, you know, a wrecking ball that's taking down that demolition site. So uh, anyway, we're building something new for um, the greater good and for our future. Um, so yeah, harnessing personal power, um, empowerment, um, empowering ourselves, um, you know, really stepping up to the plate and leading our own lives, taking charge of our own lives and co-creating and creating our own destiny. That's uh, a huge part of the higher vibration of Pluto energy. Um, Pluto, um, you know, in Capricorn deals with any secrets, I mean, any obsessions and desires that these powerful people in authority have. It's just, you know, what the planet is about then how that planet expresses itself via whatever sign it is in. So obsessions, what you're obsessed about, it, what people in power are obsessed about attaining, um, and will stop at nothing to attain. Pluto energy is, a, you know, it rules Scorpio, and it's a fixed water sign that deals with the desires that you have, and that you're stopping at nothing to achieve those desires. You will destroy people at worst, and you will... Do anything it takes to get what you want um, and um, get what you desire. So that's Pluto energy and um, Scorpio energy. Um, and with Pluto retrograde, um, it's sort of a time to do shadow work, to really look at the shadowy aspects of ourselves and to face them and to integrate them because it's not about bypass it is about doing the work and facing those shadows and reflecting on our wounds uh, reflecting on those darker parts of ourselves that you know we want to disown that we dislike that we you know hate want nothing to do with that um, um that we wish did not exist or um such as any you know toxic pattern we have or any you know um, recognizing that we are light, recognizing that we are perfectly imperfect, um, and, you know, definitely doing that shadow work on ourselves and integrating what it is that we're feeling is super important here. Um, and that's a huge part of Teal Swan's work, um, you know, who is a spiritual teacher on um you know she is has a massive following on youtube and um she is about shadow work and integration um that's um you know a huge part of what she does um, um yeah so um you know um healing and regeneration only through that work, only through evolution. You're not going to snap your fingers and your life is going to be changed and healed. It takes work and it takes time. Um, and um, it takes day by day, step by step.
to heal, to, um, you know, to transform. Um, so, um, yeah, revealing secrets of the rich and powerful. Um, you know, there was a, um, book that I was reading a long time ago, and it was called The City of Ember. And in this book, it is about this underground city that um, is functioning on lights, like, you know, you know, like straight lights, and a generator to provide light. And um, because of a certain layer that was destroyed off of the earth you know, in order to protect the people and their well-being, people were went underground and this whole city, you know, established itself and then it was sort of, it had an expiration date of it would only last for 200 years. That time was coming to a culmination in this book. And then this, um, you know, there was this metal box that was handed down from tradition because we're dealing with Capricorn, handed down from one leader to the other um, to protect it and keep it safe. And so one leader, when he got his hands on it, kept it, tucked it away, and was the ruler of the city of Ember until that 200-year uh, expiration date. And um, instead of serving and putting his sort of, you know, desires before um, you know, his own with great power comes great responsibility and any good leader will serve the people. He kept so much food and so many resources to himself um, instead of sharing it and distributing it and giving it to the people that needed it. So that's a sort of, you know, little issue with it sticking up those secrets of people in power. Um, and intensity is another part of it because Pluto is a really tense energy with people in power being very intense. Um, and so there is also a song by Barbara Streisand. It was called um, Don't um, Lie to Me. And it um, entails Donald Trump, President Trump, who, um, you know, was the president um, for a period of time. And that's the sort of big issue that Pluto, you know, because he, his election was when Pluto was in Capricorn. And, you know, he really did not do America justice with how he, um, you know, ruled. And, um, yeah, so he did not do his job, you know, there's part of him that sort of, um, I mean, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to make any, I want to be accurate, so I'm not going to say anything more. And this is controversial, you know, the political topic. Um, and it's certainly a hot button issue. Um, so, um, you know, um, don't Lie to Me, that song by Barbara Streisand um, is sort of about Trump and his, um, you know, power. And you can go on and listen to that song and watch that song. And it's basically saying, be true, you know, be honest. Um, don't um, lie, don't keep anything, you know, back from me. And, you know, own your word, um, own your actions. Um, you know, because Capricorn is really demanding that you take ownership and responsibility um, for your actions. Um, it's a huge part of it. Um, so that is that, you know, description, um, you know, that, you know, and Capricorn really is about maturity. Um, and it does take you to own your actions. And that is something very mature to do. Um, and Capricorn is, um, um, you know, spiritual in its own way as a sign. Now, I also want to spend another sort of the last part of this video discussing something super significant 
happening in um, July of 2023 of this year, which is Pluto squaring the lunar nodes. This is an aspect um, that happened at zero degrees of Aquarius when Pluto was at zero degrees of Aquarius, squaring the lunar nodes in Taurus and Scorpio at very early degrees of their signs. And so this time around, the lunar nodes are going to be moving into Aries and Libra. I'm going to be doing another video all about this transit. Um, and it's going to be super exciting when the north node hits 16 degrees of Aries, which is the degree of my sun sign. And the north node is conjunct my sun. Um, that's going to be huge, um, you know, for me personally. But, um... Um, you know, with my own astrology, so, um, the, um, lunar nodes will move into Aries and Libra, and they move retrograde, so they are going to move at 29 degrees, they're going to start their transit at 29 degrees of Aries and Libra, um, so, um, and Pluto is going to be at 29 degrees of Capricorn, so we get two different versions of this. Um, we get Pluto in Aquarius um, at zero degrees of Aquarius, and the lunar nodes at very early degree of Taurus and Scorpio, fixed signs. And then Pluto in Capricorn, and Pluto in Aries and Libra, um, which, are our, which are all cardinal signs, cardinal energy. Squares are tense aspects that indicate a lot of tension. Um, the planets sort of fight each other. They don't necessarily um, get along. There's just a resistance. It's, it's challenging. It indicates something that's getting stirred up in order for action, in order for um, growth. This feels uncomfortable. Something has to give. Let's Let's make a change. Um, that's what squares demand that we do as individuals and as a collective. So um, this square is really happening in July of 2023. Um, and, um, you know, as I said before, and now the lunar nodes, I have a whole nother video about this. Um, but in summary, the lunar nodes are points of fate and karma. The south node is karma, the north node is dharma. The south node is um, the emotional memory that we're bringing into this life. It is what we are so used to and so also conditioned into um, on a soul level. It is ingrained in us, um, but it is holding us back and there's something that, that, that doesn't work for us anymore. That is keeping us from the North Node, finding growth, opportunities in our life, meaning in our lives, um, transparency to, um, you know, be ourselves, to move to the highest level and to the highest calling and really find um, a sense of purpose in our lives. Um, that's that North Node energy. And so um, Pluto really um, is sort of an excavator that digs up truth, digs up truth. It, you know, you know, again, so this is a choice point for humanity and for us, you know, as a whole. Are we going to stay in these old ways of being or are we going to choose to move into something better, into something new that is better for humanity? Um, so this is again emphasizing healing wounds. Um, this is about doing things for ourselves that is um, that are better for ourselves and for others. Um, and um, yeah. So, um, what do we want for our future as a humanity? This is great to sort of contemplate and meditate that um, where the time is now, let's move into the future, let's um, grow and let's move into the age of Aquarius, into these new 
ways of being. Um, so, um, you know, those, you know, the judgments that we have for other people, the conditioning that we were taught and that we were trained as a, you know, child, that you know, follow the rules, obey authority, um, you know, do this, do what you need to do, you know, restrictions, limitations, you know, all these kind of things, those hold us back from us living our truth and being um, authentic to who we are. Um, so looking at how we are, not just, you know, because there's nature versus nurture, um, we became who we are through, um, you know, family or, you know, parents. Um, I was reading um, something, you know, about this from, I think it was Astro Butterfly, I believe it was called. Um, and she was, um, this article was talking about, um, it, you know, it was talking about um, how we are conditioned to become based off of our parents, our, you know, our family, um, and our genetics, and how we are created um, to be that, you know, certain, um, we have certain um, relationships and certain experiences and certain things happen to us. And I have a little segment um, video that I did, um, you know, the other day about fate versus free will. Um, and the North Node is sort of a faded point um, in astrology. So, um, yeah, um, sort of, you know, our soul inc incarnated into th this life to have these parents, have these relationships, have these set of circumstances, um, you know, yeah, that whole deal. So, um, yeah, uh, and for a reason. Um, um, a big question here is what we do and how it can hold us back. Patterns, ways of being that hold us back from living the life that we want. This is a time to release what no longer works for us anymore. Um, that North Node, or known as Rahu, is about achieving um, what was meant for us and achieving what we want to do to find that gain, to find that sense of direction that we want to move towards. So what do we want to set out to achieve for ourselves that is meant for us, you know, a new career or a new um, field or, you know, a dream job or um, a goal that you want to achieve in your life? This is where you can really manifest it and make it happen. Um, now, also, um, other themes with this is stripping uh, or, or um, this, um, what I was reading was also talking about, um, you know, the new human, the real human, um, who we are for who we are and don't we want to be loved for who we are. Um, and, you know, not, you know, how others necessarily define us um, and mold us into being like, you know, oh, get this job, have this you know, profession or whatever. But, um, you know, who we truly are um, as a human being and how interconnected we are with our um, fellow human beings loving a spiritual experience. Um, so, uh, yeah. So our sense of humanity, love, understanding, open-mindedness um, can become heightened and we can cultivate more of that uh, during this time. Um, so, um, yeah, because Aquarius is about being one in humanity and Pluto and Aquarius over the next 20 years, we really can become that over a very gradual amount of time. Um, all these low frequency judgments, the, you know, corruption, the, um, power over the, um, you know, war, violence, all these things has to die away. All these, you know, shadowy, um, 
you know, patterns and these whole hamster wheels of what we have done on a collective level um, have to die away. Um, they have to dissipate and fade away, um, you know, because, you know, yeah. So that's really toxic masculinity, and we, we can move into something more feminine, um, something more spiritual. Um, we're all holding that loving, compassionate space for one another, so. Um, and, yeah, so it also deals with that. Um, our responsibility, what are we responsible for? Becoming more self-sufficient, becoming more empowered um, to be who we are. Um, and um, looking at the power dynamics in the world, how are they serving us? And the power that we put out, you, you know, how are we using our power? Is it for good or, you know, is it for n not so good? Um... And, um, yeah, what is our power over other people? Is it negative manipulation or is it for the good? Is it to uplift? Is it to inspire others, lead others to live better lives, brand new directions, become better, um, etc.? Um, the last little note with Pluto squaring the lunar nodes is be the, being the change that you want to see in the world about you taking action and, okay, this, you know, you feel passionately about this issue, let's say, and now it's time to make something happen and change this for the better. And this doesn't have to necessarily be a big thing or you don't necessarily have to do this in a big way. It can be just something small that you want to say different, um, like a you know community issue where there's an injustice or all these big issues. What can you do to help climate change? What can you do to you know help racism, all of these big Aquarius issues um, that are really going to be put under the microscope when Pluto digs up those issues in Aquarius. So being the change you want to see in the world, um, you know, um, and you not looking for other people to do it for you, but about you, um, you know, finding the courage and confidence and belief in yourself to contribute, to do something to better your life, better your life and others, um, the lives of others around you. Um, because um, we can, you know, we really, you know, how can you serve? We really, um, a huge part of our lives is service. Um, you're doing something that's true to yourself, but also, in turn, how is it serving and helping other people? So, it really is both, and. That is my take and interpretation on this Pluto retrograde into Capricorn. I hope that you enjoyed. And I hope that you can step into the awareness of this transit. Take care.